Oklahoma City, Southeast Village Crip. Ladies and gentlemen, making a return, my boy Send Dog. So I'm curious, what is Oklahoma City's relationship like with Tulsa, Oklahoma? Uh, I've been keeping it real, man. Um, I'm talking about we all, uh, I'm talking about we Oklahoma Bell, but for some reason, them cats hate us, bro, but we don't hate them, though. You hmm. I'm just saying, that's how Oklahoma means, period, I'm talking about. Because it's like, um, you know, we got Logan and Ada and Ardmore and all that. They ride with Oklahoma City, but Tulsa is, they say they by themselves. Hmm. But uh, I got a little, I got I got a lot of good guys out there though, man. You come out, you know. I'm trying to bring Oklahoma back together, really. Mm -hmm. out, yeah. No matter no matter what set you from, I'm trying to bring everybody back together. What years were you most active? Since '89 till 2003, bro. Okay, '89 to 2003. Out. Yeah, I tell you, I was going hard for at least twenty years. Really, but um, I had my first son and everything like that, so I had to be a grown man, you know. Put childish things away when you gotta raise somebody. For real. What years would you say that Oklahoma City, just in general, was just most active? Man, I'm talking about from '91 until like 2010. It was packing down for everybody. I'm talking about uh, most of the rap stars that got them changed, nice never beat up, choked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the 90s was really going down, huh? No, nah, I'm talking about uh, we had had Ray J and all them down there. My cousin choked out Ray J and took his game. So, you know. No, nah, you better come down here with some respect on it. You hear me? <laughs> yeah. Southeast Village Crip, for everybody who doesn't know, we talked about this before. You guys are a homegrown hood. You guys are not, you know, an L.A. based hood, right? Yeah, no, nah, I'm talking about uh, we started our own set, but we just took the Crip from California. Feel me? Right, right, uh, right. As far as us, um, no, nah, it's my set. You feel me? Yeah. No, nah, we, yeah. we ain't got to go pay homage to nobody. You feel me? Nigga, yeah. when I go up to the Cali, nigga, I don't check in with nobody. They know what it is on my, my head, on my face. Mm. So, you know, shit. Uh, I don't think I'm the hardest motherfucker out here, but on the set, I'm a ride for mine. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, though, um, I don't really gang bang like this because um, we was black before this shit started. We was yeah. all black men before the shit started. Yeah. So that's what level I'm on. I'm on the level to like, nigga, we black. Yeah, yeah. real shit. Last time you mentioned a few LA hoods that are in OKC. Uh, you mentioned Shotgun. You mentioned Hoover. You mentioned Hoover. Yeah, Family. I'm talking about, um, we got 60s, 40s, 90s, uh, 107 Hoover, 5 dudes Hoover. Shotgun, one tray dudes, one tray nine. I'm talking about then with the blood gangs, we got IFG, Vanessa Gangsters, you know. Pretty much everybody that came down here and put their, you know, foot down. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about yeah, I know all dope. these yeah. from, from all the gangs though. I know all the I know everybody. Mm. For real. I'm talking about they know me, I know them. For real. Who would you say out of out of all of those that you mentioned has the biggest presence in in OKC? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna even lie to you. Neighborhood and one oh seven is deep everywhere. <laughs> okay. I've been to like eight different states and everybody got N A C and one oh seven in their mail. Who's S C V's biggest enemy, would you say? You talking about who is our biggest what? Your biggest enemy. Back when we was like you know, on that game banging type ass shit. Um, really, we was caught in the middle is because when we first started, we had love for NHC 60. Feel me? Them mm -hmm. niggas who turned us on. You feel me? So, you know what I'm saying? Um, 
a couple of people got into it type ass shit, and then we ended up love with 107 and Shotgun Crip. So, like I told all my little homies and all the homies from the set, it's not these really for nothing, bro. Um, let them niggas do their thing, bro. We got our own shit cracking. For real. I'm talking about as far as, you know, everything everything that's going on right now, we got our own shit cracking. We ain't got no enemies. We trying to get the spread. For real. Yeah, last time you mentioned GBC, you mentioned Southside Locals, and we're talking about... Oh, the- yeah. I'm talking about, you know, um, GBC is right around the corner from us. You feel me? So, you know, that's the Mexican gang that we fuck with, period. You feel me? But I'm talking about we got Southside Locos. You know, I'm talking about, you know, the essays, they have some gangster shit too, though. I'm talking about on God. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about, uh, they ain't no strangers down here. But, uh, yeah, they put it down. You hear me? Oh, we got MS-13, um, all of them. For real. Latin Kings, um, Disciples, uh, everybody. Okay. Because I was, I was putting the Disciples up on that game because I told them straight up, nigga, um, y'all set and split it up into, like, six different sets. Really? I was at Ida B. Wells and Nicholson Gordon. I mean, all all out there in the, the legendary set. Mm-hmm. And them niggas was wearing they shit to the left like they was crip. And you know they rocked to the right. Mm-hmm. But they was doing that just so they could, um, you know, try to get everybody. You feel me? But, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's Gangsta Disciple. They under Larry Hoover. He got his own squad. Then you got David Boxtel. He got his own squad. That's the BD. Then you got the New Breeds. And, you know, nigga, they said it's like fucked off. For real. And that's why I was telling them. I was like, man, y'all got like six different hoods. I mean, so which one you bang? You feel me? They say seven folks growth and development, but everybody ain't from growth and development. You feel me? <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Oh, this shit is in Oklahoma City right now. Mm. Yeah. I'm talking about everything that I spoke up on, these cats is down here. And, and they ride yeah. for they for they turf. Real. Wow. That must have been a shock to white white Oklahoma City back in like the you know, the late eighties, early nineties when gangs yeah. really no, started to get it I'm talking about OG. Nigga, that's just like you see on TV. They want you, they they gonna allow you to see what you want to see, but when mm-hmm. you come down here, no, homie, um, it's cracking. You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking yeah. about see, you can find weed on the street corner, nigga. It's cracking for real. Mm. I'm about, oh God, it's cracking for real. Um, these white folks just want y'all to see, oh, we got the thunder down here. We got this, all oh, coming suitors and all that. Shit, this motherfucker is dangerous. For real. Uh, damn. I'm talking about just like up there with y'all, homie. All I see is murders on the news down here. Damn, just like dude. up there. That's all I see is murders on the news. For real. Mm-hmm. And now the police is scared because they finna get at their ass now. Damn. Yeah, yeah, L.A. has calmed down a lot, like, compared to the 90s. Man, we were having, like, upwards of almost two thousand. Man, years. what is he talking about? I was up there in 93. Um, uh, my cousins, they OGs from Six Soul, South Central. You feel okay. me? Okay. So when I was up there... Um, Oh God, they were just telling me don't go certain places. Yeah. yeah. It was oh, like, especially hey, in nah. 93. Yeah, it was like, nah, you go over there. Um, you know, we tripping with them. Really? So I'm just like, damn, um, it seemed like, nigga, y'all got to set on every corner down here in this motherfucker. Man, <laughs> dude, I used, to have to, I used to have to walk to school. I remember my mom walking me to school when I first uh, moved to Long Beach or when I was the first one to school in Long Beach. And it was 
literally yeah. she started walking, go this way, don't go this way. And one day I went yeah. to where she told me not to go and I ran into a bunch of insane crypts and I'm like, fuck, <laughs> wrong street. Yeah, I was talking about, oh, you talking about Chinese set, the big homie. Yeah. Insane yeah, Chinese. yeah, I grew up right over there, yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, uh, that's why I was telling niggas. I was like, Snoop Dogg start that Long Beach shit, but nigga, it's rolling or insane with they squad, homie. I already know what's cracking. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, definitely, man. And it's still yeah. that way. Long Beach is still a blue city, man. No blood gangs have tried yeah. to come into Long Beach, but it, it, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It ain't happening. Nah, I'm just saying, man, uh, when I was up there at uh, Los Angeles, man, I was just asking them, damn, y'all got a set on every corner type shit? Yeah, man. I wasn't used to that, you hear me? Because I was used to, like, nigga, um, nigga, we got to travel to the northeast side or the southeast side or if we gang banging on somebody, but they not, like, right there around the corner, though. You feel me? Yeah. And the crazy part is a lot of them grow up going to school together, go to and going to elementary, middle school because they live Man. in such pro- close proximity. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. That's why I was just like, "Man, um, y'all this close? I know y'all know all of these niggas." You feel me? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about personally. I know y'all know them personally because nigga, it's only two or three blocks away. Yeah, family, probably family. A lot of them are cousins and relatives of each other, but they're all different sets just because they live two blocks yeah. over. Real yeah, shit. And then when they call me, say, get down, homie, you got to get down. Real shit. Yeah. You mentioned six O's earlier, and we just passed the one-year uh, anniversary of Nipsey Hussle. So I know we kind of talked about it in our last interview. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. we're a year into it, you know, um, but I want to I want to ask you, how do you think something like that could have been avoided? Just keeping it real, man. I'm just keeping it 100. When you touch bread like that, bro, I'm talking about yeah. You come back and bless the set, but you're not a part of this no more. You're in a different um, bracket now. You feel me? I'm talking about once you get that bread like that, um, you're in a different bracket, bro. Uh, in the streets, that's over with. You feel me? So he didn't need to be on the streets, period, because he was already a, a major um, figure in life. You feel me? I'm mm-hmm. talking about if Nipsey was still here right now because it'd be bigger than Snoop, nigga. It's because everybody loved and respected this gangster, nigga. Real shit. Because I keep on watching this video where uh, the people that took pictures from me was like, no, nah, bitch, I'm a crip. What the fuck you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Real sick. Quit playing with me. You feel me? Yeah. And I was like, no, nah, cuz no, he shouldn't have been in the streets no more once you touch that kind of bread. You feel me? You yeah. touch that kind of bread, man. Um yeah, it's all right to go bless the set and all that shit, but at the same time, you don't be nowhere around, bro. It's over with. You feel me? Mm-hmm. You're in a different bracket now, cuz Anybody who would not ever had any animosity towards you niggas looking to get some fame off of you, bro. For real. You know that? Yeah. It's, yeah. We call it, we call the shit down here sneak this. Really? Yeah, nigga sneak this, uh, Missy up the man and took his life. Nigga, he was on the uprise. On oh, God. He was on the yeah. uprise. Mm-hmm. For real. Yeah, talking about people. People still inboxing me, talking about how they went down there and bought clothes and shit. Really, the mar the marathon always continues. Yeah, that's really. definitely man. Damn, such a lyricist too, man. That was, that was the cold part, man. Just, hey, the cops yeah. locked down his area for when uh, for his anniversary. They wouldn't let nobody in on property. Ah, uh, probably more more so due to the coronavirus too. No, nah, I'm talking about, you know, when that shit uh, exploded, like that coronavirus shit, when that shit exploded, they shut all black businesses down, bro. And I told yeah. them, man, that's some government shit. You feel me? You, nigga, what $1,200 going to do for anybody? Yeah, nigga, that's I make, crazy. I, nigga, I make, nigga, I could make that shit in um, two hours on God. 
Right and now. you're in Oklahoma. Where, you're in Oklahoma where the cost <laughs> of living is not as high in California. Imagine getting twelve hundred dollars in California. That that, that don't pay for a fucking Man, car. Uh, what are you building. talking about? Uh, when I had an apartment up there, I had a one bedroom. Nigga, that shit was eleven hundred dollars a month. And that oh, was God. back in ninety three. Yeah, I'm talking about back in '93 is eleven hundred dollars. Yeah, that'd be three thousand. That's like three thousand now. Yeah, no. What I'm saying, I come down here to Oklahoma, nigga. Uh, that shit is under five hundred dollars. Yeah. You feel me? For real. Yeah. And they giving you free water and all type of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, hell no. Nah. A nigga got to be selling birds living up there in the town, bro. Real oh. shit. <laughs> it's so hard not to go back into that life, homie. I'm telling you, dog. No, nah, I'm, so I'm, I'm talking about, oh, here. God. I'm talking about, for my mother passed, man, I told her. I said, Mama, everything was easier when I sold crack cocaine. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> where. <laughs> Nigga, I'm saying cheese uh, every two days. So, shit, we can do whatever the fuck we want to do. You feel me? Yeah. Because uh, no. I ain't never been on, I ain't never been on flashy ass nigga or none of that shit. You feel me? I'm talking about, you know, all these niggas. Oh, yo, nigga, I got big old chains and all that shit. You might be a pussy too, my nigga. Real shit. You feel yeah. me? Because, uh, it, nigga, so, just so bringing so attention. Just bringing attention to yourself. The wrong attention to yourself too. Yeah, uh, no, nah, that's why I keep on telling everybody. I said everybody who got cars and rims and shit, you drawing attention to yourself, my nigga. Because if you ain't that nigga, bro, a nigga gonna come take your shit. Real shit. Because mm -hmm. you, you got you got black people out here that's like that. Like, oh, I think he a pussy. Let me try to take his shit. You drawing attention oh, to not, yourself, yeah. man. And and not only to not only to 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 our own people, we're drawing attention to the police. Oh, that dude has money. No, nah, I'm talking about, about, oh, no. talking about. You got the feds on your radar and everybody now. You feel me? Oh, the, oh nigga, I got a truck on thirty sixes. Okay, and I bet you the feds looking at you. That's some wing shit, nigga. That money that you spent on that shit, nigga, you should have had that spent. So when rainy days come, bro. Because yeah. a rainy day is, is going to happen. Feel me? Right now, we're going through rainy days. So all the niggas who ain't got their bread together, homie, they suffering. Because there ain't no get back right now. For real. Nigga, you go to a, um, a fast food place right now. Nigga, you got to go through the drive. There ain't no more coming in. For real. Yeah. For real, I'm talking about if nobody ain't got their bread stacked like that, bro, they suffering. For real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all, are. we all are. We all are. $1,200. Man, suck my dick with $1,200, bitch. Man, that ain't shit. For real, people out here got lifestyles. For real. Yeah. For real, I'm talking about the middle class, the low class, the high class. Everybody got their own lifestyle and that shit is not going to help us. Period. For real. Yeah. Nigga, they forgot. <laughs> nigga, um, we just like Mexicans. Nigga, we have kids all year round. Fuck you, man. we black men. Nigga, uh, <laughs> nigga, I dig it hard when the wind blows on, on, on everything. You feel me? So we're like, oh, yeah, I'm finna go home and f my girl. We're shit. I don't know what y'all finna do. I'm finna go home and yeah. uh, take a shower and f on her, and it's over with. For real. Oh, and you, yeah, and you know in nine months a bunch of babies are gonna be born because that's what everybody's doing right now while they're sitting at home. Man, I'm talking about they stuck in the house, so now you ain't got no choice but to make love to your wife or your significant other or anything like that because, nigga, everything is shut down. To end that conversation, big homie, I think uh, the government did this shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me tell me why. I'm curious. No, nah, it's, it's because it's called population control. Feel me? So if they know they can control the whole world like that, it's on now. You know, they the, they the upper powers. For real. They the upper powers right now.
Whatever they say goes, bro. Am I right or wrong? Whatever they say goes, yeah, because we have to do it. Like, they say they, they go in the house at 10 p.m., we got to do it. So you're definitely right about that. They're about to institute uh, martial law. They're just getting everything in position, all the tanks and everything. Yeah, Man, hope I'm... you guys are strapped up. Hope you're strapped up. Man, I got like eight or nine them bitches. I ain't worried about anybody. <laughs> I'm One in every about... room. Nah, what I'm saying is... Um... I'm trying to get everybody together to where, like, hey, homie, it's going to crack, so everybody needs to be on the same page. For real. Everybody. I'm, from, I'm talking okay. about shit. Um, what people don't know is, OG, the um the low-income and the um, middle-income white people, they niggas too, bro. Feel me? They niggas That's too. True. You feel me? That's true. Real shit. Yeah. Cause nigga, they gonna ride with us when all this shit go down like that. They riding with us. Cause shit, they never had no silver spoon and none of that shit. They grew up in poverty too. For real. Yeah. That's what I said. I'm trying to get everybody together, but it all starts with us first. You feel me? The black people. Yeah, we ain't gotta never stop fighting. No we gotta stop fighting each other first, and then. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Black people ain't never had no unity. We yeah. all need to come together. Yeah. Hey, hey, I, I just some just popped up in my head, but this is Tulsa. But um, Black Wall Street was down there, wasn't it? Nigga, oh God, nigga, Tulsa is the first one that nigga, nigga, Tulsa was gonna be big like fucking New York type shit. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. shut that and, shit uh, down, bro. Down. They shut that shit down. Mm-hmm. They the first ones who even started Wall Street type shit. Mm-hmm. To where, um, man, they had over um, 25 black businesses down there. So everybody was buying black owned everything. Man, these racist uh, white people went down there, man, destroyed that whole town and killed them and everybody. Yeah. And this was 100 years ago. This wasn't like 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. I'm talking about ago, like but... 1923 type shit. Yeah. I'm yeah. talking about. Uh, Black people in Tulsa was on their business, bro, to where, like, shit, they had it. They they ran the whole fucking town. It was black home. They went and shut that shit down, bro. That's yeah. that's why I say, um, you know, they did us just like they did the Black Panthers, bro. The Black Panthers was not gang members. They was about helping the people. Real shit. Because oh, back yeah. then, in them days, um, nigga, they was giving us government cheese and shit. Nigga, fuck that shit. Nigga, we trying to eat just like y'all is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. The gov- yeah, they, they they stopped the, the Black Panthers because they were they were positive influence to blacks in, in the, the city. But they let gangbanging flourish. If they wanted gangbanging to stop, they could have stopped gangbanging 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Man, but they man. said, fuck it. They're just doing their job. They're doing our job. They're killing each other. So let them, let them keep yeah. doing it. That's what I'm saying. Man, I'm talking about if people, all right, people watch it and just be entertained, right? But actually, these directors is telling you some real inside um, messages. You hear me? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about, look at it, um, the Black Panther movie. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Oh, God, nigga, um, the, um, the police officer told dude, well, ain't this your neighborhood? If it was my neighborhood, I'd hold it down. That's where that shit came from. Mm-hmm. For real. You feel me? That's where that shit yeah. came from. You got to look for all the inside messages. These directors is really telling you. So we're like, nigga, they really started all this shit. For real. Yeah. And it's like, oh, now these That's niggas gang banging. Um, we really ain't got a role in their hood no more because they're going to kill each other. Real shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what the and world we, and is. We, and we did a great job at it in the past 40 years. Great fucking job. <laughs> Man.
you think a lot of gangsters suffer from PTSD? You said suffer from what? PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder. Hell yeah. Everybody got that shit that's ever grew up in any gang environment. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about, man, you got, I'm talking about the shit go deeper than that, OG. Come on, man. Everybody that grew up in single parents' homes, man. So yeah. when you That's ain't got that kid. mother figure or that father figure, you know what I'm saying? And just like I told niggas, I was like, because I actually grew up good. I had my mother and my daddy living in the same house. Shit, it's just my brother started this crippled shit. You <laughs> feel me? For real, but I'm, I'm just, I, I know where all that shit leads to those because uh, my homies I grew up with, they ain't never had no mother or father at home. Yeah. Nigga, they either got their mother or nigga, they got their daddy, you know what I'm saying? But they ain't never had both parent figures at home, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's why I was telling the difference between black and white. White people actually raise their kids. I'm talking about now. Now you put that on a regular um, black child that all he have is a mother, and he going through all this shit that America got to give to you. you feel me? Because yeah. yeah, America is cold to the motherfucker. For real, I'm talking about to blacks anyway. You feel me? And he got to go through that shit, and he ain't got no male figure. Uh, oh yeah. He gonna grow up to be a fucking killer. The hell you mean? Because all he ever seen was disrespect that is like real. Yeah, talk, man, talk. That's uh, that's why it's so important for, for dads to stay around, man. Something like seven out of ten black fathers are not present in the home, and that has a big influence on on everything that happens in our community. Everything. Man, I told my nephew. Uh, uh, cause you know what I'm saying my sister, you know, uh, most of my family passed away from natural causes, so I ain't tripping. You feel me? Ain't nobody killed my peoples, but I got my nephew with me, and I just try to show him, nigga, that um, I'm your father figure, I'm your mother figure. So take it how you want to. Um, I'm gonna teach you right. You feel me? Yeah. And I, I be showing them everything that I, I'm, I'm speaking to you, OG. I show them that shit. You feel me? Like, look, you ain't got, nigga, all he got is his mama. That's it. For real. Yeah. So, hell yeah, he coming outside with attitude. You feel me? Mm -hmm. He ain't got no father figure. He ain't got nobody around him that's, you know, just going to show him the ropes at a life. Yeah. That's so true, man. Damn. I like how deep we're getting, man. And, and youngsters out there need to listen to this, dude, because, you know, we're older. You know, I'm in my man, 40s. Man, what, so what, I'm, what I'm saying is, bro, OG, everybody been listening to our thing was just like, man, I know you was deep like that. I was like, man, I be trying to teach everybody, but if y'all want to learn, bro, I ain't going to waste my breath. Feel mm -hmm. me? Yeah. Because... I'm going to point you in the right direction. It's all on you to take that direction. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Keep yeah, doing that nice. shit, man, because these, these young kids out there, they're lost. Their, their OG is, is like two years older than them. You know, you got a 17-year-old and his OG is 19. You know, back in your day when you were you were banging, your OG was several years older than you. You had someone <laughs> to talk to. You know what I'm saying? Now you could be that person. Yeah, no, nah, what I'm saying is everybody who I run across, OG, I'm talking about no matter what stand tone you is, if I see you going down the wrong road, I'm going to try to give you this advice that, nigga, I soaked up from living. It's called mm -hmm. experience. You feel me? Yeah. So, you know, take it from a person who already got experience. You feel me? Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's my whole message to everybody. Take it from a person who already got experience. For real. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we that's done, dope, dude. We done been there and done that, bro. Feel me? Yeah, man. So if, if I could try to help, I'm going to do my best just to, you know, speak it into your mind. You know, hopefully you hear me. You hear me? <laughs> yeah. 
happened to you hear me. You know what I'm saying? I can't make nobody listen, but hopefully you heard me. You know, yeah, man. that's the only thing. That's so true, dude. And that's why I do this. That's really why I do this. I don't do this to glorify the gangster life. I do this to, first of all, uh, educate that there are characters all over the country. And, and I do this so people like you could drop little jewels and gems like that. Nah, that's what I'm saying, Hopefully. though. You know what I'm saying? I ain't on her. I ain't on her um, speaking up on my gang like that, man. I'm on her trying to grasp some knowledge, man, because the world needs to hear this shit. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about because, uh, man, we losing our babies. For real. If the streets ain't killing them, these police is. For real. Mm-hmm. Feel me? Yeah. And I seen, I seen over fucking 25 black people got killed for no reason by the police. Damn. No reason. For real. Mm. And shit mm. never happened to them. <laughs> yeah. The blue yeah they go home with pay. They go home with pay. Real shit. Yeah. That's, that's crazy, man. What's What's been uh, your worst experience with police? I'm just curious. For me, Oklahoma City police just sounds scary to me. I, and I'm from L.A. for LAPD. Well, I, I had my ass whooped over three or four times <laughs> on Martin birthday Ooh. and all that shit. Mm. Oh, God, I talk about, oh, my big brother just got, got a penitentiary system for 16 years. And, oh, God, he said, nigga, I remember um, when I punched the police in his mouth and ran off and all that. Nigga, I went home to my mama's house. Nigga, they kicked my ass in front of my mama, my grandma, everybody. They told me, how you like them apples, G? Wow. Yeah, oh, God. Yeah, they down here, uh, nigga, same, same treatment y'all get. We get the same shit. Mm. Oh, God. We get the same exact shit. For real. Dude, I think that's the best way to end it right there, my dude. I think we need to do this, like I said, every every couple of months or something, man. You got, you got. Oh uh, yeah, man. I'm shit. talking about my my line is open, man. I got you locked in. So if I ever change my Perfect. number, I'm just gonna be like, oh, gee, it's my new number. Perfect. Sounds good to so, me, man. Thank you so much, man. It was a pleasure, sir. Dog, it's always been a pleasure, man. You stay healthy and safe out there. And you know, uh, once again, peace to you and your family during this tough time. And uh, and I hope you guys stay strong. And and I know you guys will make it through, man. Oh yeah, we gonna make it through. God is good. We gonna make it. There through. it is. Um, everybody have a blessed one. God bless everybody. Everybody. All right, homeboy. I'll talk to you soon, man. Right. Peace, doc. Peace. peace.